Hello students, this is your English lesson. In this lesson, we are going to read unit number 17, The Magic Shop from Oxford Reading Circle 6. So, we start our lesson. This is page number 151. I had seen the magic shop from afar several times. Afar at or to a distance. I had passed it once or twice. A shop window of alluring, alluring, powerfully attractive little object. Magic balls, wonderful cones, ventry locates dolls, ventry locates dolls. Someone who entertains people by speaking without moving lips. Packs of cards that looked all right and all that sort of thing, but never had I thought of going in until one day almost without warning gib hold me by my finger hold me tug me pull me right up to the window if i was rich said gib dabbing a finger dabbing to strike or touch slightly at the disappearing egg i'd buy myself that and that which was the crying baby, very human. Gip, dear boy, lewd, my finger, lewd, lift, lewd, my finger, doorward, and made his interest clear. That, he said, and pointed to the magic bottle. It's less than a hundred days to your birthday. Gibbles, I said and laid my hand on the door handle. Gip made no answer, but his grip tightened on my... It was no common shop, this. It was a magic shop. For a moment or so, we were alone and could glance about us. There was a tiger in papaya mache. Papaya mache, a piece of paper mixed with glue used to make decorative objects. On the glass case that covered the low counter, there were several crystal spheres, a china hand holding magic cards, and an immodest magic hat that shamelessly displayed its springs. On the floor were magic mirrors, one to dry you out long and thin, and one to make you short and fat. And while we were laughing at these, the shopman, as I suppose, came in. There he was behind the counter, a curious, sallow, dark man, with one ear larger than the other. What can we have the player? He said, spreading his long magic fingers on the glass case, and so with the start we were aware of him. I want, I said, to buy my little boy a few simple tricks. Larger man, he asked. Mechanical? Domestic? Anything amusing? said I. Um, said the shopman, and scratched his head. Then, quite distinctly distinctly in a way that is very noticeable he drew from his head a glass ball something in this way he said and held it out the action was unexpected that's good i said with a laugh isn't it said the shopman gibbs stretched out his disengaged hand to take this object and found merely a blank palm it's in your pocket said the shopman and there it was how much will that be i asked we make no charge for glass balls said the shopman politely we got them he picked one out of his elbow and as he spoke free 
he produced another from the back of his neck and laid it too on the counter you may have those said the shopman we get all our smaller tricks in that way our larger tricks and our daily provisions provisions providing and supply and all the other things we want we get out of that hat janwan magic goods sir he drew a business card from his cheek and handed it to me janwan he said with his finger on the word and added there is absolutely no deception deception the act of hiding the truth sir he seemed to be carry carrying out the joke pretty thoroughly i thought he turned to gip with a smile you you know are the right sort of boy it's only the right sort of boy gets through that doorway and as if by way of illustration illustration picture there came a rattling at the door and a squeaking little voice squeaking make a high pitched sound voice could be faintly heard naya i want to go in there dada naya and then the accents of a parent urging consolations consolations comfort it's locked edward he said but it isn't said i it is sir said the shopman always for that sort of child and as he spoke we had a glimpse of the other youngster a little white face pallid from sweet eating pallid pale pouring at the enchanted pain it's no good sir said the shopman as i moved with my natural helpfulness doorward and presently the spoiled child was carried off howling how do you manage that i said magic said the shopman with a careless wave of the hand and behold sparks of colored fire flew out of his fingers and vanished into the shadows of the shop you were saying he said addressing himself to gib before you came in that you would like one of our buy one and astonish your friends boxes gib after a gallant effort gallant brave said yes it's in your pocket and leaning over the counter this amazing person produced the article in the customary conjurer's conjurer's magician manner paper he said and took a sheet out of the empty hat with the springs sting and behold his mouth was a string box from which he drew an unending thread which when he had it tied his parcel he bit off and then he lit a candle stuck one of his fingers which had become sealing wax red into the flame and so sealed the parcel then there was the disappearing egg he remarked and produced one from within my coat breast and packed it i handed the parcels to gib and he clasped them to his chest then with a start i discovered something moving about in my hat i whipped it off and a ruffled pigeon ruffled wrinkle or rough pigeon dropped out and ran on the counter tit tit said the shop man leaving me over my headdress careless bird nesting he shook my hat and shook out into his extended hand two eggs a large marble a watch about half a dozen glass balls and then crumpled crumpled crushed crinkled paper crinkled to form many short bands more and more and more talking all the time of the way in which people neglect to brush their hats inside as well as out all sort of things accumulate sir 
nearly every customer astonishing what they carry about with them the crumpled paper rose and billowed on the counter until he was altogether hidden and still his voice went on and on his voice stopped and the rustle of the paper stopped and everything was still have you done with my hat i said after an interval there was no answer i think we'll go now i said i want the bill and my hat please it might have been a sniff from behind the paper pile let's look behind the counter gip i said he is making fun of us i led gip round the tiger and what do you think there was behind the counter no one at all only my hat on the floor i resumed my hat dada said gip in a guilty whisper i do like this shop then a door opened and the man with one ear larger than the other appeared again you'd like to see our showroom sir he said gip tugged my finger forward i was beg i was beginning to think the magic just a little too genuine we haven't very much time i said but somehow we were inside the showroom before for i could finish that all goods of the same quality said the shop man rubbing his hands together and that is the best i glanced at gip who was looking at a magic rocking horse do you see anything you fancy here said the shop man to gip there were many things that gip fancied there he turned to this astonishing trades man with mingled confidence and respect is that a magic sword he said a magic twice sword it neither bends breaks nor cuts the fingers it renders the bearer invincible in battle against any one under 18 invincible too powerful to be defeated or overcome Oh dada gasped gip i tried to find out what they cost but the shop man did not heed me he had got gip now presently i saw with something very like jealousy that gip had hold of this person's finger as usually he has hold of mine i wandered after them saying very little it was a long rambling place rambling lengthy and conf- confused with archways leading off to other departments in which the curest curest strange strong looking assistants loft loft and stared at one and with perplexing mirrors perplexing very puzzling per perplexing mirrors and curtains i was presently unable to make out the door by which we had come the shop man showed gip magic trains and then some very very valuable boxes of soldiers that all came alive directly you took off the lid and said i myself haven't a very quick ear and it was a tongue twisting sound but gib got it in no time bravo said the shopman putting the man back into the box unceremoniously and handing it to gib now said the shopman and in a moment gib had made them all alive again you will take that box asked the shopman will take that box said i and the shopman swept the little man back again shut the lid and waved the box in the air and there it was in brown paper tied up and with gibbs full name and address on the paper the shopman laughed at my amazement This is the genuine magic he said the real thing it's a little too genuine for my taste i said again after that he fell to showing gip tricks gip was quite preoccupied with the shop man they were whispering together and looking at me gip was standing on a little stool and the shop man was holding a sort of big drum in his hand hide and seek dada cried gip you are he and before i could do anything to prevent it the shopman had clapped the big drum over him i saw what was up directly 
take that off i cried you will frighten the boy take it off the shopman did so without a word and held the big cylinder towards me to show its emptiness and the little stool was vacant in that instant my boy had utterly disappeared i came up to this grinning shopman and kicked his stool aside stop this fully i said where is my boy i put out my hand to grip him and he eluded me eluded escape from he eluded me by a dexterous dexterous showing or having skill Dex, dexterous movement i snatched again and he turned from me and pushed open a door to escape stop i said and he laughed receding receding go and move back i leapt up after him into utter darkness utter complete third lord bless my earth i didn't see you coming sir i was in regent street and i had collided with a decent looking working man decent collided collided hit by accident with moving decent looking working man and a yard away was gap there was some sort of apology apology an act of saying that you are sorry for something and then gap had turned and come to me with a bright little smile and he was carrying four parcels in his arm he secured immediate possession of my finger for a second i was rather at a loss i started round to see the door of the magic shop but there was no door no shop nothing i did the only thing possible i walked straight to the curb stone and held up my umbrella for a care i helped him in and got in also for a space neither of a spoke dada said gib at last that was a proper shop um i said little boys can't go to shops like that every day later we opened the parcels three of them contained boxes of soldiers quite ordinary lead soldiers and the fourth contained a kit- kitten a little living white kitten in excellent health that happened 6 months ago the kitten had only the magic natural to all kittens and the soldiers seem as steady a company as any colonel could desire one day i said how would you like your soldiers to come alive gib and march about by themselves mind do said gib i just have to say a word i know before i open the lid then they march about alone oh quite dada i shouldn't like them if they didn't do that i displayed no surprise and since then i have taken occasion to drop in upon him once or twice unannounced when the soldiers were about but so far i have never discovered them performing in anything like a magical manner now come to the exercises a questions one what attracted gip and his father to the shop answer gip and his father were attracted by the tempting objects in the shop window two in what ways was the shopman strange answer the shopman had one ear larger than the other appeared and disappeared suddenly and seemed to be able to perform magic three why does the father think that the shopman was carrying out jokes pretty thoroughly on them answer the shopman was making sure that gip and his father had no excuse to accuse him of cheating later the shopman was talking a lot to gain their trust and was repeatedly reminding them that all his goods were genuine four had you been in gibbs place which magic article uh, would you have opted to buy and why answer i would have bought the magic 
rocking horse because it could take me to far away places within seconds. I could go wherever I liked and see all the countries of the world. The horse would never get tired and I could keep riding it whenever I wanted to. I would also talk to me. It would also talk to me and become friends with me. 5. At which points did Gibbs father think it was time to leave the shop? Answer. When the shopman disappeared with his hat, when he wanted to show them around the showroom, when he made magic that seemed too genuine, like when he made Gibbs disappear. 6. When and why did Gibbs father feel jealous? Answer. When Gip grasped the shop man's finger and became very friendly with him, he felt jealous when Gip's affections seemed divided. divided. 7. Why do you think it was not possible for Gip's father to make the soldier's king come to life? Give two reasons. Answer. The number one reason is because he could not grasp the magic words and number two because adults can't work magic. 8. Do you think Gip and his father ever wanted to return to the magic shop? Give reasons for your answer. Answer. Gip. Yes, because he believed in magic. His father no because the shop and the shopman in intimidated him and the shopman intimidated him b reference to context read these lines from the story and then answer the questions one t -t -t, said the shopman relieving me of my headdress a. When does the shopman say this and remove the speaker's headdress? Answer. When Gip's father pulls off his hat and a pigeon comes out of it. B. What is in the headdress? Answer. A pigeon. C. What does the shopman do immediately after this? Answer. The shopman shakes the hat and removes many more things from it. 2. I came up to this grinding shopman and kicked his stool aside. A. Who does this? Answer. Gibbs' father. B. Why is the shopman grinding? What has he done? Answer. He is having fun at the father's expense by making Gip disappear. See what happens immediately after this. Answer. The shopman and the shop disappeared and the father finds himself on the road with Gip. See words and meaning. 1. Explain the following. A. Packs of cards that looked uh, all right. Why is the word looked in italics? Answer. To emphasize that in a magic shop, seeing isn't necessarily believing. B. Larger man. He asked. Mechanical. Domestic? What do these words mean? What tricks might you associate with each? Answer. Refer to, refer to magic tricks. Larger man. Performed by hand. Mechanical done using pieces of machinery. Domestic done using household appliances, etc. C. Gip stretched out his disengaged hand to take this object. His father's finger. D. You, you know, are the right sort of pie. What might the wrong sort of boy have been like? Answer. Lazy, winning, spoiled, arrogant, demanding, complaining. E. Magic, said the shopman. 
with a careless wave of the hand why was the wave careless what does this tell us answer that the shopman was experienced and had been done uh, had been doing magic for a long time f he had got gib now what does this mean answer he had grabbed gibbs in trust and now had his complete attention to use these words in sentences of your own a beload beload stream beload out of the tent into the chilly evening air be enchanted draina was enchanted by a big house see immodest immodest some people believe it is immodest to expose your arms d invincible i am the best i am the greatest i am invin invincible e alluring the life in a big city is alluring for the young people thanks for listening for new videos don't forget to subscribe my channel and if you like my videos please share and like